Welcome, my friends, to the Bob and Brad podcast produced by Bob and Brad, the two most famous physical therapists on the internet. I am Bob, I, exactly one half of the Bob and Brad team. And today, my partner in crime is actually Mike Keenitz, PT assistant. Right. Yeah, no Brad. But we're going to talk about today, we're going to talk about with Ross Clifford. He is the author of the book, Mike. Want to say it? Build your own bulletproof body, all body weight exercises or stretches and foam rolling as well. You're going to find this really interesting. Here we go. Welcome to the program, Ross Clifford. So I'm um, big fan of the book, uh, Build Your Own Bulletproof Body. We'll have a link below. We're actually going to start a section now on how to bulletproof your shoulders. So Mike, you want to ask the first question? So you talked about the importance of shoulder blade and rib cage as an important false joint. Uh, could you tell us why and what muscles are attached to those regions? Okay, so it's often referred to as a, a pseudo or a, or a false joint, like you say. And this is basically the, the articulation or the joint between the, the rib cage uh, and then the scapula that sits on top of that. So effectively, it's not a true joint in that you don't get bone on bone with them, um, you know, with a right with, with all the things you would normally see in a joint. But what you, you get is more sort shoulder, of shoulder blade by absolutely. Novice, yeah. You get effectively a muscle sandwich. So you get the rib right. cage and you, and you get the, the scapula, the, the the shoulder blade, and you get this muscle called the serratus anterior sitting between it. Uh, and then you also get some some of the rotator cuff muscles. You've got subscapularis, and then the bit the the major rotator cuff muscles on the back. But more importantly, um, you have these muscles called the rhomboids and the trapezius, which most people will be common, uh, will be familiar with, uh, particularly the upper trapezius. Uh, and then there's a long strap-like muscle called the levator scapula. Um, and it does exactly what it says on the label, really. It elevates the, the shoulder blade, the scapula. Right. Um, and between the trapezius, the rhomboids and the levator scapula, you tend to get a lot of um, imbalance. So what that causes or what it's caused by is sometimes that the shoulder tends to protract or come forwards and slope. And you can see even in this position here, that places a lot of pull and tension on, sure. on the muscles that run from the shoulder to the neck. So if you're sat there for a nine, 10 hour day at a desk in that position, um, yeah, I can see there's probably. already some stretching going on there <laughs> just thinking about it. And uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah, I'm the same. And it just sort right. of away, it raises your awareness that there's not a balance there. Uh, and that's right. really where I think that the bulletproof body, body weight exercise movement um, can help restore some of that balance between those key muscles. Well, you may be answered my next question. The, the, so the goals of the body weight exercises for the shoulder are? Your TS, so to, re to restore balance effectively, so gotcha. to try and get you to retract or, or pull back. Um, so there's a nice exercise, which is the chest stretch, which is just to open up at the front. Um, there's some active exercises to try and draw back um, the, the muscles at the back, um, the rhomboids and the lower trapezius as well. Um, uh, there are exercises that target the latissimus dorsi, that you know, the big lats muscles, as they're commonly right. referred to because they, they have a little bit of contact on the shoulder blade and then they come down onto the ribs as well. Um, so we're really targeting the, the muscles that need to be stretched at the front uh, and to be activated at the back to sort of open up the chest gotcha. and the back as well. So in trying to rehab a chronic shoulder issue, do you often start by focusing on the false joint? Yes, absolutely, because... It, the analogy that I often use with my patients is, okay, you've come with a, what appears to be a rotator cuff problem today. Right. We, we, we can do all the work in the world on this, but if you walk away from this session and you then let your shoulder drop into an abnormal position, then, then You're back the problem. It, dis yeah. it discounts everything that we've just done. So the idea is, you know, you build your house on solid foundations right. and you and you do your shoulder work, your true shoulder work on a solid foundation of a, a, of a nicely positioned shoulder blade. Um, now, what that true position is, we don't know, but it certainly isn't being held in this forward right. position for, for hours on end. Can lead to impingement too, right? Correct. Absolutely, yeah. And, you know, there'll be a lot of therapists who will work just on the impingement. Right. You're wasting your time unless you, unless you address the, the underlying cause. Cause, right. Which may, which may be 
um, that there is this uh, secondary postural issue um, created at sure. the shoulder blade. Yeah, the shoulder girdle, as, as, as we sometimes call it as well. So we're going to go over five of your exercises. Uh, we'll start with the chest chest stretch. You talked about it before, already, but could you please describe it and give a little purpose of it? Yeah, sure. So I think this is around page 38 in the, in the book or wow. thereabouts. And it's a nice, it's a nice, easy stretch. Um, and effectively, what you're doing is you're you're bringing your shoulder backwards um, you're bringing your arm backwards just to open up the, the chest position. So ultimately, you're stretching um, the, the pectoral muscles. Um, in particular, we're trying to target uh, the pec minor muscle as well as the pec major muscle, just to see if we can bring that shoulder blade backwards uh, and uh, relieve some of the tension on the front of the chest. So there's a nice diagram in the, in the book uh, with um, a, a simple description uh, as well. And effectively just involves bringing that arm and shoulder backwards and maintaining that stretch. Right. And Mike's demonstrating the exercise while we talk. Yeah. I'm going to yeah. overlay some uh, video image so the viewers right. can see the, right. the audio people are screwed. But yeah, that's true. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> well, I, g I gave a great, uh, hopefully, audio that's right. description there. That's right. so yeah. I'll uh, do my best. Could you talk about the shoulder stretch you have on page 42 of your book and the benefits shoulder of it? Stretch. Oh yeah, so this this is, I mean, this is a game changer from my point of view for anything that's shoulder related, that's the one, you've got it. So, I mean, I see a lot of patients, particularly over the age of sort of 60, and they probably haven't brought their arms above their shoulders for um, two or three years at least, because, sure. you know, they may be not engaged in sports. The most they probably do is peg out a little bit of washing or close their curtains, but, but they're not right. regularly operating at this. So often when it comes to them actively raising the arms up, they, they really struggle with it. But if you look at that stretch, that's a way of passively bringing the arms and the shoulders all the way through to elevation. But the absolute beauty of that stretch is that if you see from the book there in the image, it creates extension of the thoracic yes. spine as well. So we talk about building the house on a solid foundation. So not only are you stretching the shoulder joint, the glenohumeral joint, as it's technically known, but you're smoothing out the curve of the thoracic spine and you're allowing the shoulder blade, the scapula, to sit in a much better position. Wonderful. So uh, uh, again, we want to emphasize that you have a lot of exercises. We're only showing five. But we'll yeah, start, sure. how about the rotator cuff stretch? Yeah, so the rotator cuff stretch. So in this one, um, Ashley uses um, a dowel or a rod uh, to create a little bit of passive stretch. Uh, and effectively, what he's trying to do is he's trying to rotate out the shoulder and then rotate in the shoulder. And sure. actually, I, I do have an issue with this left shoulder of mine. And I have noticed yep, that, you know, you I have that. got some discrepancy um, on this left side. So it's definitely something that we should all address. And again, it pro probably comes because of a postural defect. And then that means that some of the rotator cuff muscles are held in a shortened position and others are elongated. So that stretch in particular is around using the dowel to create either internal or external rotation at the shoulder and uh, just stretch out those, those tight rotator cuff muscles. Are you left-handed or right-handed? I'm right-handed, actually. Oh, wow. That's but, I, but I'm a, I'm a left-leaner, you see. So there I'm we leaning. go. So, yeah. yeah. Do you want to talk about how you do um, foam rolling of the scapula? Oh, so yeah. So the idea here is that you get the foam roller and you uh, sort of lay back onto it, placing as much stress as you feel comfortable to do onto the foam roller. The rest of the stress can be taken either through the, the buttocks or, or through the legs, you know, depending on your position. And, and again, that's it demonstrated in the book. Um, but the idea then gotcha. is you take as much stress as you're comfortable and you just roll backwards and forwards on your back uh, with the with the foam roller going sort of across the back, uh, sort of perpendicular to the spine. And um, yeah, what a, what a great way of ironing out the. Uh, yeah, I do it every day. The, yeah. the lower the lower traps and the rhomboids, but also again yeah. you're getting that thoracic extension. And quite often you'll get a little bit of a pop or a cavitation yes, as exactly. you're doing it, a little click. Uh, and that makes everybody feel great, doesn't it? Right. Love the sound. Uh, Love the scap sound. Scapula push-up. 
Yeah, so scapular push up, we're getting more now to the, the, the nitty gritty of the book, the finer details. But um, this again is around how do we activate muscles that are perhaps a little bit uh, sleepy, uh, a little bit underused. So the idea here is you bring yourself into what would be regarded as a press up position. Um, so again, you know, you've got the plank, you've got all the core muscles working. Right. And the idea here is you hold yourself in that press up position but you just draw the shoulder blades back and down slightly as if you're almost trying to draw them into your back pockets uh, of right. your jeans. Uh, and the idea is then you, you activate those, um, those lower trapezius muscles. So uh, yes, great little exercise. Not yes. everybody can do it. It takes a lot of practice though. Do you have any other thoughts or tips for bulletproofing your shoulders? Well, uh, my absolute favorite, and it's not for everybody, it's the, the frog stance, I think is the, the term we use in the yeah, book. Yeah, I tried that one. I couldn't do it. <laughs> if, if you're going to do it, that I would say that's a sort of a level three exercise, maybe right. level two Absolutely. exercise, um, and you'd have to build up. But the thing about it is you, you don't have to go directly into a frog stance. You can bring yourself in the position, still keeping your tiptoes on the floor, sure. but just lean forward through the shoulders and get the shoulders used to taking some body weight. And that's one of the key formats of the textbook is that it, it often reverses what we do with the body. So we're not used to taking a lot of load through the shoulders, but actually that's probably part of our evolutionary makeup is that we were load bearing through the shoulders. Sure. So, you know, there's maybe a little bit of a function there and, you know, look at a child playing that they'll crawl, uh, and actually, I think there's, I believe there's some evidence that children and babies that don't crawl tend to go on to have more shoulder issues. So there's definitely that oh, uh, need, I think, to develop that weight bearing through the shoulder. But it's, uh, it's not for everybody. And if you are going to do it and come up forward onto your hands, have a cushion or pillow or something soft, just in case, <laughs> in you, case go you go over. Yeah. Thank you for taking the time to uh, demonstrate. I mean, discuss all these exercises and uh again we want to mention the book mike do you have a website or anything where people can reach you at um or social I, media yeah, i want i want to i want to say yes but i don't <laughs> know what it is ashley you ashley would know um but we'll put um, it in the description box below if you just want to email it to us right yeah <laughs> we'll, we'll we'll send you something to uh post-production there we go that sounds good all right any final thoughts you want to give Rob. I just want to say thank you both for your time. Uh, it's well, been a pleasure you. to talk to you both. And uh, oh, I really, really appreciate this platform and this this um, this conversation that we've had today. So thank you very much. Oh, it's a terrific book. So I should oh, thank you. Very everybody kind. get one. Yeah. Okay. You've got one already. What yep. more could you ask for? That's right. We need two. <laughs>